We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. So I'm not normally one who reads a ton of poetry or older literature, but every now and then I'll come across something that really stands out to me and resonates quite well. Anyone who knows me knows that I've always been a fan of these little bits of inspiration that you can get from anywhere. And if you've been following this channel for some time now, you might know that this channel talks a lot about living with purpose, intentional productivity, and practical approaches to reach your goals. So if that is stuff that tickles your fancy, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you three specific poems that have pretty much shifted the way that I view this journey that we call life and all of the ups and downs that come with it. My hope is that you might derive some value and inspiration from them, just as I have. With that said, let's get right into it. The first poem is called If by Rudyard Kipling. You might know Rudyard Kipling as the Victorian era poet and writer of the Jungle Book. His poem If is an excellent example of stoicism in the pursuit of your dreams and the mindset that you often need to have in order to achieve them. Here's a few lines that stood out to me. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. At first glance, it might seem like this is kind of like that tough guy, stiff upper lip kind of approach to life, which while popular at the time, I don't think is particularly healthy today. But when you read it again, you'll see that it's more about having the kind of resilience that it takes in the face of adversity, because oftentimes following your dreams can be a lonely affair. Victory and failure will be yours, but you'll have to endure them on your own. Plus, there are people who might not believe in you or cast doubt on whatever you're doing. But if you're able to keep your head down and put in the work, things might just end up working in your favor. The second poem is The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. This one is more of a narrative poem or one that tells a story. It was first published in 1915 and primarily talks about the divergence of paths, both literally and figuratively, that we face in life. Here's a little excerpt. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler long I stood, and look down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Now, the interpretation of this poem has historically been polarized with plenty of irony throughout, but the way that I choose to read it is that no matter what happens in life, we're often prone to look back and regret the decisions that we've made. Instead, we greatly benefit from understanding that shit just happens in life, and we have to keep moving forward knowing that ultimately, sweating over the small stuff that generally stresses us out isn't really worth it. There's also a popular, mostly erroneous interpretation that when he says, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference, it's viewed that when you break away from the masses and blaze your own trail, you're more likely to receive a payoff or experience success. This isn't really what Frost meant, but I think that it doesn't hurt to think of it this way and derive inspiration from that. The final poem, and probably my favorite one, is Invictus by William Ernest Henley, also a Victorian-era poem with a lot of stoic traits that we first saw in If. Invictus is the Latin word for invincible, and it's such a powerful poem that it's been used in speeches by people like Winston Churchill, Nelson Mandela, and Barack Obama. This is the abridged version. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged the punishments, the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. 
The reason I love this poem so much is it talks about how each individual's destiny is not at the mercy of the obstacles in front of them, but under their own control and can have great payoff with perseverance and a strong work ethic. I often turn to this piece when things seem challenging in my own life to remind myself that there has to be something that I can do to make it better. And if there isn't, maybe I can shift the way that I view that entire experience. It's really effective because Henley uses simple language and visual imagery that actually helps illustrate the point he's trying to make. And that's exactly why it's had such a strong impact on me. I'm really curious to know if there are works of literature that have given you inspiration or shifted your mindset the way that these three poems have done for me. Let me know down in the comments below. As always, drop a like on this video if you found it helpful and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.